Hello folks, I decided to create a follow-up video regarding my Borderlands 3 cheat table that's posted on Fearless Revolution forums here under update number 8. Uh, mostly because of the fact that um, I've not looked at this game in one year's time. I've played the initial version on Epic Game Store, finished the game and tossed it away. Uh, perhaps I think played also one or two DLCs. Um, but uh, since this game has become available on Steam platform as well, I decided to give it another look. I've recently been gifted the game on Steam platform by a friend of mine. Uh, hello, Sebastian from Chile. And I was able to compare the two editions, so to speak, and found no notable differences between them. Um, the purpose of the video is to showcase a bit the table, uh, explain how uh, some of the stuff in there works, what's the thought process, explain some Unreal Engine functionality, um, and mostly why some things work in a certain way and why they don't in a certain way and why you need to do them at a certain point in time and so on and so forth. So without any further ado, I'm going to start the game and run Cheat Engine. Open the game process in here. Normally, if you have the cheat table saved in the My Cheat Tables folder in My Documents, you will see this pop-up. I will not choose Yes. I will open up a debug version instead. The only difference between the public table and the one that I will open here is the fact that there are two additional scripts that I will use for the purposes of this recording. One of them kills the Steam ID display you'll see it happening, you normally see it happening when you get past the screen and you see signing in and then username in the mid of the first screen that you see past the, the commercials. You can also see that I've disabled the videos from running. And then the next thing that's going to happen is once you get to the main menu in the top right of your window, you'll see your shift ID. And I want that to be faked as well. Uh, the reason for this is not uh, the fact that I might get banned or whatnot, but uh, so to speak, uh, I don't want everyone else out there adding me to their friends list. Well, I'm joking, of course. You'll say that I'm rude. <coughs> so, <coughs> pass the screen. So normally here at the bottom you would see signing in and then your Steam username. You only see signing now. And then once you get to main in the top right you would see your shift ID, which is of course faked this time around. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the topic here on Fearless Revolution Forums and you want to download this archive called Borderlands 3 Console Dumper .rar. This is the uh, password for it. You'll need to use this to be able to extract the content. Just extract it into a folder of your choice, like I have here on my desktop. And then you will want to run the injector.exe. What this does is, well, if you follow the instructions, press any key to continue, the window goes away. What this does is to get this DLL inside the game process. So now, when you're pressing tilde key, this will happen. At the same time, with the console having been created in your game folder, you'll find these two text documents. Game folder being... Oh, accidentally created a shortcut for it. The game folder being in your Steam library, Steam apps, common, Borderlands 3, Oak game, binaries, and Win64. That's the tree. You can see it here as well. Uh, these text documents are created uh, so to speak at runtime, meaning every time you transition from one level to another, you will have to recreate them. I mean, you'll have to redump them, so um, in order to do that, you'll have to press numeric pad slash. Um, the reason for the need to recreate them is the fact that the engine destroys and creates objects on the fly. So for example, when you transition from main menu to game world, you'll have more objects having been created in the game world that will not be made available in your objectsdump.txt. Plus the text document is going to be larger because, well, at main menu you only have a few of the objects available to you. 
while in a map you have several other objects, AI, cars, vehicles, whatever, and whatnot. So whenever the engine is spawning something, you will need to redump the text documents. And to redump them, like I said, numeric pad slash. So let, let's do a test. So numeric pad slash, and then you go back in here, you see zero, byte, zero kilobytes, and then the file has been recreated. Now, back to the table. The first script you want to activate is enable. What the script does is it looks for an array of bytes to identify a location in a function called fViewportDraw. This is a generic and, so to speak, core function in Unreal Engine 4. Um, inside this function, there is a spot where the local player is acquired, and this is where I come into play. That's where I place my hook. And getting the local player will then um, allow me access to obtain other pointers of interest like game viewport client, console, player control, chain manager, player character, and then specific to this game alone, the developer perks pointer. I'll explain what these can be used for or are used for in a few minutes. So with this in mind, if you have a script enabled and then you take a look at the debug sections, you'll find quite a big tree of stuff in here, which I will explain a bit later. But for the time being, you can see that the local player is here. You can see the player controller. There's no pawn, no character. We're not in game, so you will be tempted to say that this one is a character, where it is visually, but in Unreal Engine Space World, this is not playable. You cannot play with it. Um, you can see that the cheat manager is invalid zeros and that is because the developers chose to not to include any cheat manager functionality or cheat manager related commands that you can use in the console here's an example as you can see command not recognized first up we don't have a cheat manager in which this command could be queried secondly the god uh, commands execution function is not compiled in this shipping build. Usually in shipping builds you'll find it, but not here. Um, and then because of the fact that we injected the DLL, the console object is valid. <coughs> How do I know that this is the console? Be well, because if I double click here and copy the address and I go into the objects document, I recommend that you use Notepad++ because Notepad and Wordpad sucks. Well, suck is this plural. And I search for this, I will see that it's the console object. This is the address where I can locate it, and this is the name of it. All right. Hey. Now, the next thing you want to do. So, for example, uh, the next thing you want to do is expand the engine section, and then you'll see several scripts here. If you want to clear out the console, as well, it's crowded with stuff, just first open it, and then activate the script. You'll see that it doesn't actually activate, because I put this return asset true, which doesn't let it activate, but it does run, so clicking, uh, ac clicking on this checkbox here will do this. The console got cleared. Test. Clear. Just in case you want to clear out the console. Uh, the script here called unrestricted CVARS. Um, well, it does work, but there are actually no uh, console variables that are useful to us. There are a few of them, but well, they're not related to cheating or whatnot. So while it works, it has no use to you. I just left it in there for uh, well, legacy purposes. And then the most important script that you have in this section is inline oak cheat manager. Well, let's actually create and inline oak cheat manager. What this does, if you remember, the cheat manager right now is invalid. What this does is it will first create the cheat manager, it will place it at that location in the player controller, and then 
it will identify a function that normally is responsible with reinitializing that object every time a transition occurs from one level to another. Uh, what the engine does when you move from one level to another is it destroys the current objects and then it reinitializes them as in the fact that it allocates them at diff different addresses when uh, the, the level finishes loading by the time the level finishes loading. So that's why you also need to redump the text files because the so for example uh, some of the objects that are now having a certain address for example let's say the pawn had an address right this one here now if you move from main menu to game world you'll see that this address changes and when the address changes you know that you also need to redump the text documents um, like I said if the game spawns something like you see an AI spawning from a creature den or a vehicle spawning from midair or something like that in order to be able to <coughs> find it in your um, <coughs> sorry about that in order to be able to find it in your text document you will need to redump it with numeric pad slash it's near the numlock key so um, once the script once the script is activated you'll see down below here a set of other stuff that you can can use the next script that I'm going to talk about is restore and VMT hook you cheat manager execs this script takes care of restoring functionality to fly walk ghost god and players only console commands and functionality It will take a bit for it to activate. Alright. Now, this one and this one, you can activate them anytime you want. This one, though, you'll have to do it in game because there's no developer perks pointer that's available to us right now. Let's take a look. So, the cheat manager is valid, and then developer perks is zero, it's null. So because the developer perks pointer is not valid, this function will not run. You can try to run it, you'll see that it doesn't run. Or actually, let's see. Well, it will run, and because of the fact that this is a... Ah, yeah. Yeah, it won't crash. Alright, so I made sure that you won't crash if it's zero. So nothing will happen here if you try to run it now. Let's go in-game. And for the sake of the argument, take a look down below here where the cheat manager is. See, it's a zero now. Then the moment you get in game, you'll see it's, it has a different address. All right, I'm going to run away a bit from this spot because I know there's a vehicle incoming. Huh? And it will not stop till. It pesters me. Alright. You can also see that now we have a character, a playable character, and then there's a lot of attributes that we can play with here. I'm going to talk about the debug section, like I said a few moments later. So once you're here, you want to test out, for example, God. You see that you can enable and disable it by typing the same thing in the console god you can do fly there we go to disable fly you have to type in walk and then you can also do ghost which allows you to fly plus disables collisions to disable fly, uh, fly and ghost type in walk now another thing Another command that's useful. Let's let me try and go in here. And all right. So they spawned. Like moth to a flame. 
Alright, so now when I do players only, what this command will do is it will freeze the current state of everything that's in the current world. So. They're frozen. Or like dormant or something like that, if you will. These were caught like when <laughs> running or walking. This one as well. This one as well. And you can also see in the top right that your minimap has been frozen as well. So if you want to kill these while you're in players only, you can, you know, kill him. But you'll also see the side effect of the weapon not stopping from firing. That is because when you start doing an action, not all of the frames are executed. Only one frame is executed. And in order to stop this, that's a bypass that I found. If you press V, well, I think he vanishes after a while. Yeah. So if you press V, you basically uh, interrupted that loop. That's how you interrupt the loop by pressing V. And then you can perform the action again if you will. It's annoying to see the weapon firing like this constantly, so. At the same time, you don't see. Oh, yeah, you do. Well, because the weapon is firing constantly, it doesn't consume any ammo. You see 20 down below there in the clip. Alright. And you also destroy this vehicle. Alright. And then type in players only one more time to get stuff resumed. Alright. here okay so those are the commands that you can initially use now we want to make use of developer perks functions the ones that I mentioned here give levels give cash iridium golden keys limited ammo limited customizations how can we do that well first up you will need to activate the script update developer perks functions to you funk exec Alright, so they were, I think, yeah, there we go. So everything here, as you can see, has become available. I'll explain a bit what this, what these here do. So, there are certain developer functions that are legacy, like inherited from Borderlands 2, and the, devel the developers made sure that when they're shipped in the game, they are not set to be executable. So if you open the console and you try to do something like spawn awesome items, the commands that you already know about, this is what's gonna happen. It will say command not recognized. It will say, well, why doesn't it work? Because we, we've run the, the script here and it should be executable, right? Well, it is executable, but in order to get to the actual command, um, the execution loop of what happens when you type in the command also has to include the developer perks pointer. That's what this script here does. It will hook a function called uplayerExec in which it will basically extend the functionality of uplayerExec function to also include the developer perks pointer in all of the functions that are within the developer perks class, well, all of the usable ones. And those are the ones that I mentioned on the forum, or if you take a look here, you'll see give levels, cash, iridium, give golden keys, spawn awesome items, kill enemies, unlimited ammo, and unlock all customizations. So let's try each of them. 
after we enable the script. So the script was enabled. So I said give levels. This gives you five levels. Well, I don't want to do it right now because I just started a new gameplay. But if you feel like you want to level up without doing gaining experience, shooting mobs and whatnot, just run this command. No parameter, just the command alone. So just copy this, paste it in the console and press enter. Let's add a million cash. So I'm just going to use the part here at the bottom. You can see where I typed. So this is the mouse pointer. I'm moving it down below. Give cash, right? Paste it, press enter, and this is what's going to happen. I get a million cash. Give iridium. 100,000 iridium. Give golden keys. 10 golden keys. Spawn awesome items. We'll talk about this separately. Kill enemies. Let me just copy that. Go to a location where there are a bunch of enemies. I'm assuming they are generated here or not. So the timer's not done. Uh, let me just go to those dens there. So you see some skags coming at me, right? And you do paste and then you do this. Not far where that came from. This so can't exploded. be how you saw this going. Alright, one more time. Paste, enter, boom. He died. And they do leave loot drops behind them. Okay. So that's kill enemies. Unlimited ammo. What unlimited ammo does is once you enable it, it's a toggle. You see that I have 22 bullets in my clip and 212 in my magazine down below to the right. Now once I start firing, the magazine will start filling up from zero with the number of bullets that I'm firing from my clip. Here you go. Alright, reloads, back to zero, and then again. So basically unlimited ammo works as a consume ammo from the clip and fill it in the magazine and then redo once you get to zero. That's what it does. If you want to get back to normal, just type it again, fire one time, and then you're back to normal. Alright, unlock all customizations. I don't want to run this as well because, well, it will unlock every customization possible in the game. You'll just have to try it on your own if you want. Now, a spawn awesome items. With spawn awesome items, uh, and before I start explaining this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press numeric pad slash just to redump the text file so I have a fresh copy. There you go. It's going to take three or four seconds for this file to fully get dumped because, well, it's 100 and so megabytes, as you can see. It doesn't get dumped instantly. It takes a while to be written to disk. Um, fortunately for us, Notepad++ it catches the fact that the file has changed, so it will ask you to reload it. And when it does, just press yes. Okay. <clears throat> it's annoying when you're trying to do a recording and the AI in this game annoys you with sounds and whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm trying to move here. Okay. Back outside. Like I said, there is the spawn U function spawn awesome items. If you double click here, copy the address and you look it up in this document, you'll find that it points directly to the function. This function also <coughs> comes with certain parameters, which are two arrays that you see them created here. So you have the function and then you have the parameters, array property, object property. So internally, the spawn awesome items function 
uh, makes use of two arrays in which it will populate some item pools from which the function will then randomly spawn a certain number of items. And by default, the function spawns items from these pools. First is legendary artifacts, class, legendary class mods, legendary grenade mods, legendary shields, guns, so four times from the same pool, an iridium stack, I mean from the iridium stack pool, from the iridium stack and from the money reach item pool. How many of these items are spawned is also randomized, so it, it's not a fixed value from each of the pool based on the rand function, the random number generator in there, you'll get one, two, three, whatever. So this is the default setup. The reason I put these names in the brackets is if you take the addresses, so double click, copy, cancel, go to this file and then do a control F and look for that, you'll see that it corresponds to exactly what I put here. Artifacts of five legendary. Then you do the same with the next one, control F and you see that it belongs. It stands for item pool class mods of five legendary and so on and so forth all the way down now this is where your customizations come into play so what I would do is I would at this point in time in this level where I'm at right now because of the fact that I have already redumped the text file I can look for all of the items that contain this uh, pattern, so to speak. So Control F, Control V, find all in current document. And everything that you find in there are pools from which you can spawn stuff. Just keep in mind that these pools are available to you at this point in time in this level. Now, if you move to another map and you don't use a fresh copy of the objects dump, from that level, then it's possible that some of the, well, most likely uh, s most of the addresses corresponding to these item pools are going to be different. So if you're trying to use this address, for example, in another level, you will end up with a crash. Then if you move to a level, let's say that this item pool belongs to a boss or something like that. If you move to the level of the boss, and you read on the text document, you'll find this pool here. But if you move to this map that I'm currently in, there's no boss anymore. So when you read up the objects dump, you will not find item pool grenade mod money underscore four in this map. Why? That's because the boss is not there anymore. So all of these pools that you see here in my list are here because they're corresponding to the level I'm in. If you don't find a certain pool and you know it's there, then just go to the level you know that pool is going to be loaded in. For example, those new events that uh, came out with the new DLC, well, you won't find them in the standard level. You'll probably find them in the levels in which they're supposed to drop. So just go to those levels, press numeric pad, slash, and then find them in here by looking for item pool data, data space, item pool underscore. Now, what can we do with the set all item pools to? Well, I wrote a function that basically takes the um, address that you give it to, and then it uh, updates all of these offsets in spawn awesome items Unreal script function. Now, this is the, the Unreal function, and then at offset 48 in the Unreal function um, structure, you will find a pointer that leads to a buffer. That's the Unreal script. That's what the actual function does. It executes an Unreal script bytecode function. The components of the function, so the pools that are going to make up those arrays that I just mentioned earlier, are located at these offsets. So plus B, plus 14, plus 1D, plus 26, and so on and so forth. If you take a look at the Unreal script, as in at this address, in memory, so I will press Control B, you'll see it down below here. It starts from here. 
So this is how the Unreal script looks like. It's not readable. You'd expect that you would see some text because you heard the word script. Well, it's not how it works with Unreal Engine and Unreal script. This is bytecode. It's executing like a virtual machine that knows how to interpret these opcodes and to uh, execute them inside the, the actual uh, Unreal Engine processor. All right. So what this script here will do is we'll take the address that you give it to and it will update all of these down below here. Why do we want to do this? Well, we want to spawn only what interests us, right? So for example, if I want to spawn only sniper rifles, I'll just copy the address, control C, I'll just click on this, I'll paste the address, control V, I will press OK, everything here got updated, and then I will go back in game and I will run spawn awesome items. So now when you take a look at what's on the ground, you'll see only sniper weapons. So with spawn awesome items, you can control which poles the items are going to be spawned from. Though you cannot control which exact items are going to be generated. So don't be picky about it and don't complain that you cannot spawn the dueling monocle, for example, exactly this weapon. You'll just have to make do with what's offered to you. Otherwise, I think there are means for you to just compose your item of choice by using Savium editors and whatnot. Now, for example, if I want to spawn, let's say, customizations, right? Loot operative, heads. So heads for the operative. I'm currently playing with the operative. You can see down below where my health is. So if I want to spawn customizations, I will copy that address, go here, click here, paste it, type OK. This was updated. And then I will run this. So what you see down below here are only heads. Well, there's like 13 of them, but they're superposed, so you don't actually see all of them. Let me just, there you go. So there's quite a lot of them in here. Also in my inventory, you can see that I have most of them. Dropping them, all right. Uh, also, if you want to get some stuff from some missions or from some bosses, Hunt Done, Burning Summit, there were some bosses in here. Um, trial Boss Cag, Trial Boss Saurian. Let's try with the Saurian. I'm going to copy this one, click, paste, OK, and then Let's see, I will move around to here. Spawn off some items. Oh, so these give you mods, class mods. Shady Sonic Boom Infiltrator. So you'll just have to test them around. Trial Boss Tech. Let's see what this one does. Copy. There we go. Also mods. Okay. Let's see what else is here. Um, Silvestro. I think this gives you some weapons. Paste. Yep. There we go. Yep. Weapons and shields. So these are the usual drops from the bosses. All right. <clears throat> so this is how you can use what's in my cheat table regarding spawn awesome items. If you don't like the idea of using or enabling the script just like I've uh, explained or looking through a file that contains the item pools and whatnot, so if you don't like the idea of doing this manual or it's too complicated for you, then there's another 
topic in which you can download the script and follow the instructions and by using the fabricator gun you can I think it also gets you uh, finds you all of the pools at, um, that are generated in memory uh, for the current level so you won't have to do searches like I did here and then get the addresses and whatnot uh, but there's a catch it only works with a fabricator gun right now in the map that I'm in I'm level 11 I don't have any fabricator gun so if you're early in the game and haven't finished it and you don't have the fabricator gun well you can't use that script of course probably there's let's see I'm not sure if I'm going to break the game now but let's try uh, fabricator and well why did I do that and then I want to copy everything in here all the way down and then I want to drop it here and then I want to look for item pull hmm interesting item pull data item pull fabricator guns item pull iridium fabricator so if I go to this and copy this and put it here ah damn it I never mind put it here set item pool data to or whatever it was the text <coughs> now I have updated this and I'm curious if I it will spawn me Hope the game doesn't crash. Here it goes. No, it doesn't. Cool. So I have an Iridium Fabricator. Fires 10 guns. So I can do that as well. Uh, take. Inventory. Can I use it? Oh yeah, I can use it. Shoots guns instead of bullets. Fires 10 guns per 10 Iridium. Requires 10 Iridium to be used. So basically, I have the... <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay, there you go. So we fixed this. I already have the iridium. Hmm, interesting. They don't have any widgets. But then again, also those don't have any widgets. This one does. Hmm. All right. So this is how you get the <coughs> fabricator gun early in the game, <laughs> so to speak. All right. Um, so that's about it with spawn of some items. Now let's move on to the debug section. So. What can, well, scripts first. So there's God Mode script. Um, the difference between using the God Mode command, the God command, and using the script is the fact that once you have moved from one map to another, because of the fact that the uh, engine destroys the objects and reinitializes them, well, that God property that you just set by typing the command and executing it is going to be lost. It's going to be reset to its default state. So, if you want to avoid that happening, you can use the script. The script will make sure that every time you transition to a new level, um, the boolean value that stands for God is going to be set to on. So if I do this, the script has been initialized and then let's go in here. And you can see that when they fire at me, nothing happens. Alright, um, the same thing applies to a vehicle that you're going to get inside. So for example, if you get inside this vehicle, this vehicle will get God. So see, now it gets damaged. But if I get in the vehicle and then get out, see, 
heavy outfire. I'm firing at it as much as I can and you see it doesn't get damage at all. So any vehicle that you hop onto will instantly get God enabled. If you want you can uh, hijack two vehicles um, then exit both of the vehicles let the AI get both vehicles <laughs> then let them shoot each other if you will in an infinite duel because no one dies. Well of course the pawns will die. Uh, there are um, types of damage that apply to the player even if they're the driver of the vehicle or firing the, the vehicle weapon. Alright, so that's God. Now with infinite clip ammo, of course you get what you paid for. So the clip is not increasing. Still at 22. Okay. Now let me show you vehicle god. I'm going to get inside the vehicle. I'm going to go to an area where AI fires at me. Which is somewhere around here. There we go. Alright. There are some idiots up here. There we go. Come on, try to fire. Hmm, that didn't get his attention. Alright, let me move a bit further. No, still. Yeah, there we go. So no damage to the vehicle, no damage to the player. Let's see what else. Now, in the debug section, it's what's happening. What's going to be interesting? So, whenever you hop into a vehicle, the player controller is going to swap the pawn that it controls. So, right now, the player controller is controlling the player. If you walk inside the vehicle, now the controller controls the vehicle, therefore this pointer will change, it will show the current object that's being controlled. And if you exit the vehicle, it's going to be the player. So this boolean here, B, can be damaged, so that's being assessed by the script, it's going to always be toggled on. So for example, if I remove card mode, you can see that this 82 changes to something else, and then the vehicle gets damaged. You can al already see that I'm taking damage. I'm enabling it back. And then I don't get damaged anymore. And my health just refreshed. Right. So it's good for you to know that the player controller will always point in the acknowledge pawn property to the object that it controls. Now what can you do with the debug section? This debug section is quite long to talk about, therefore I created this I created I added the script here called compact mode. What the script does is when you enable it, it will remove the upper part of cheat engine. You can toggle it on and off with this menu up top here. Now that allows you much smoother scrolling of the cheat engine window. Now what can we do in the debug section? So, <clears throat> hold on a sec. Yeah. Cool. Say I didn't warn you. Exactly. And let me move to an area that's not that populated with stuff. Okay. 
back here. In the hiding. Alright. So, you probably may be wondering what's up with the offsets that you see between the brackets and what's up with the names, and how did I come up with those names? Well, in order for, for that to, to be properly explained, you will need to know how Unreal Engine, I'm not sure if only 4 or previous, yeah, previous as well, uh, versions work. So, um, like I said, this, the hook that I'm applying, which is called Enable, the script here, will place a hook. The hook is responsible of getting with getting one uh, particular object, which is called local player, and from there to map out any other functionality. How do I know that's the local player? Well, if you take a look here at this address, copy it, search it here, and you'll see that it says oak local player. I named it local player instead of oak local player because that's the default based on the based on what it is, not specifically what it's called in the game. So what am I looking at? Am I looking at a local player? This local player for this game is called oak local player. Why is it called oak local player? Well, that's because the local player is the default name, which to it gets the name of the actual game, which is Oak. Borderlands 3 is called Oak. How do I know that? If you take a look at the bar here, it says Borderlands 3 slash Oak game. That's what they call the game, Oak. So, Oak game, Oak local player, Oak game viewport client, Oak streaming interaction manager, and so on and so forth. So that's the, the internal name of the game, if you will. Now, I have local player. Then if I take local player, I do full view mode, hold on, copy, cancel, full view mode, memory. If I take local player and I go to that address, and I set the, the display type to 8 byte hex, because we're in x64 world, and then I go to 30, offset 30, so I pressed control enter here, control enter does this shift of display, just so I can see here, 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, the offset, it's easier to spot the offset, so now if I go to 30, this, that's being specified here, I should find the player controller, I should find this address, 171EAE0010, there we go, this is the address, now if I copy this, and I search for it here, I'll see what it is. The name of it is BP Cont Player C Sacrifice blah blah blah. So this is the player controller. How do I know this is the player controller at that particular offset and why at offset 30? That is because if I take These the player boots controller were made for walking, not standing. and look it up in here and do find all in current document. I will see something like uh, somewhere in here object property. Let me copy all of this. So I search for everything that's related to the player controller. All right. Then I move it to another window. Then I do object property. I'll explain why I'm doing this. So now you have all of the object properties that contain the name player controller in them. So it says here engine player controller. What I'm looking at, what I'm looking for is something that says local player or player dot player controller. Uh, or maybe it's not player controller, it's controller. <laughs> Spectator pawn. What if I look for local player, object, property, anything in local player? You're now going to also see some use of regular expressions. So I'm looking for something that starts with object property, that, well, not necessarily starts, but has object property word in it, then anything in between, then local player. Mm, okay. And then if I do player, Oh, there's going to be a lot of them. Uh, okay. 
So the idea is this, every object, every pointer that you can find in the Unreal Engine um, is going to be obtained through checking object property objects. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit tricky, but this is how you normally do it. You find a base object, like for example, player controller, or let's say acknowledge pawn, right? So we take a look at an acknowledge pawn. Let me just do it like this. So acknowledge pawn is this address, right? You look for it and you see that the acknowledge pawn, sorry, this, ah yeah, because it's not in this file, but in this file. So acknowledge pawn is our character, which is our operative, the one that I'm playing with. And in here, you'll see B can be damaged. Okay, you see the offset 91? All right, you look for B can be damaged. That's why I use the name of the property to display in the table and not exactly what the property is. So B can be damaged says engine actor B can be damaged. So your player, your character is an actor, right? So some of these settings might be inherited from core engine functionality. Just keep this in mind. The relationship might also inherit properties from the default en engine functionality. So B can be damaged here says it's a bool property. So what this means is B can be damage is going to be a byte, one byte. By looking at the bool property object, which is defined by this address, you will find the offset at which to find that byte in your base object. So I'm going to take this separately, copy it, put it here. I see bool property, so I'm going to be looking for a byte, then I take the address, I go in here, and I place it here. Now, in this particular version of the engine, the offset that you're looking for is located at offset 44, so 40, 44. Now here at offset 44, if you take a quick read, it says 91. So in your bool property object at offset 44, you will find the, obj the offset for which to look into your actor structure. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to add 91 to it because that's what I read here, 91. And at this offset at 91, I'm going to find a byte. And that byte is what you see here, 82. Uh, now, when you enable God, this is the byte that's being toggled on and off. Take a look at what happens when I enable and disable the script God. See, it fiddles with that particular property. Now, when I say bool property, I'm not saying byte as in zero one, I'm saying bool. A bool can also be toggled through or and uh, assembly functions and so on and so forth. So it's not zero one, that's a byte. A bool is a bool. 0 to 255. So that's how you find the offset in your base object at which you will apply the property. You have the bool property object. Now let's take another one. So here you see character movement component, right? It says 4C8. Now if I look for this in here, says oak character movement component okay but if I take let's say character movement component and look for all of the possible occurrences in my file I see that at some point there should be an object property that ends with character movement component mm. Then again, maybe you want to look for a movement component. I don't know exactly what I did to find it. Pawn movement component, class, 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 object property. Actually, let me do it like this. Mm, and space. 
Okay, so you see here object property GBX AI, GBX weapon, Octator camera man, engine default pawn. So here we go. This is also inherited from the core functionality. Default pawn or um, your character, the operative, are two pawns. So whatever applies to a default pawn also applies to your character. So if you take a look at this, and we copy it, right? We place it here, then we go to this address. We will see this. Let me display it in 4 by text. 4C8. At offset, control enter, offset 44, like I said. So in the whatever int bool float object property, at offset 44, you will find the offset in at which in your base object you'll find that particular property. The pointer, the byte, the integer, the float, and whatnot. So there it says 4C8. If you take a look here, I have 4C8 here. So 4C8 contains the character movement component. That's the offset at which in my pawn, on my character, I will find that component. So that's how I was able to map everything that you see in here. So that's the way the relationship works. All right, enough for the theory. Let's go to the practice part. So the bug section, what can you do in here? For example, if you want to walk fast, you'll look at max walk speed and you'll look at the first attribute here. I should, every time you see in my table an asterisk, that means that's the setting that you should be fiddling with. So 470 is the default for movement. And this is how fast I'm, I'm running. Okay, now if I change this to, let's say 1200, check my movement. I move three times faster. And this is applied only to my pawn. It's not applied to any other AI that I'm facing. So I'm like flash to them. Okay, he be dead. One more here. There we go. Now, if you want to, let me put it back to 470. The reason you see two values is um, the developers of this game, usually this max walk speed is a float value. You get the, the offset for it. So let me search for it. Max walk speed. Find all. So normally you'd see something like this, float system, float property, and then something that ends with max walk speed. When you look at the float property here, full view mode, okay, you see that it's located at 5A4. That offset 5A4 applies to an object that is a GBX character and nim instance. That's not the case for us. We're looking at a pawn and we're looking at character movement component. So we need the one that's f related to the movement component, which is this one here. And as you can see, it doesn't say float property. It says struct property. That is because the developers of this game, so if you take the address, you look for it in here, you'll see that the offset, control enter, is 27, 274. Before it, I see a 02 now. I'm not sure if and this is something related or not. So a structure contains one, two, three properties. For this particular case, the max walk speed has two properties. One is the default. One is the current speed, so to, so to speak. And the other one is the default value. So current, default. If you, for example, modify the current one and you forget what's the default one, you can look at the second attribute, which is for seven, which tells you what uh, the default speed is and it, you can reset it back. So that's how you play with this. So that's what the struct property refers to here. In other games that use Unreal Engine 4, you'll see that the max walk speed, and it's going to be called exactly like this because it's a core um, property, uh, is going to be a float property, not a struct property. So 
So that's the fun part about Unreal Engine. You can reuse some stuff here. So changing this to 1200 has that effect. Now, if you want to fly and fly faster, so fly, and this is how you move. You move slightly faster than walking, but you want to do it faster. So instead of 600, just plug in 2400 and then watch this. Look at the minimap. Yeah, so that's how how fast we are going, in the direction we're pointing. And surprisingly, these are solid. Cool. Now, when you disable fly and you move around, you'll see that you don't move fast anymore because that fly setting is just for um, the mode in which you fly. So you can leave it at 2400, you can reset it, whatever. Right. Now, here's a feature that I like in Unreal Engine and it's not popular in trainers or tables or whatnot. Mostly because I don't think people are aware of it, or perhaps it's done a bit differently, uh, like I've seen with uh, Deep Rock Galactic. Um, so what this does is it tells the engine how many times you're allowed to jump before you can fall to the ground. How many times you're allowed to press the jump key, actually. So the setting is 1. If I change it to, let's say, 99, then I can do this. I'm pressing spacebar this many times. So it's like flying, basically. Going down. And of course, because of my height, well, you'll also hear some sounds. <laughs> like you just heard. So if you take a look at the jump current count, it basically contains the, the value that uh, the value of your key presses. So one, two, three, pause. It says three. The moment you hit the ground, it's reset to zero. So you can set this. The reason I put it to 99 is, well, um, imagine that you can't press spacebar 99 times before you fall to the ground. You will eventually, at some point in the next five minutes or so, will have to drop to the ground, in which at which point this will reset. So this zero will never reach 99 in a game session, so to speak. But if you want to play, let's say, somewhat legit and uh, not cheat too much, and just set it to two or three. So one, two, there you go. One, two, and then you fall. So if you don't like using fly as well, you can also make use of this to reach some locations. Maybe you get better control if you do it like this. And we drop after 10 presses. Alright, so this is how you use the jump stuff. Now in the resource pool component you'll have you'll find the current health, max health, max shield, current shield. The reason they're not ordered alphabetically is I'm ordering them by offsets. So that's why you don't see them current max, current max. So if I change current health to 100, you can see that it drops down below here. I set it back to its original state, so it's happening, and so on and so forth. But since you already have God enabled, you don't need to worry about this. Unless, like I said, you don't want to cheat too much, so you want to freeze them. Alright, moving to the oak damage component. Um, with this feature here called last hit by, this property here, you can create something like um, a one hit kill, one hit auto kill, so to speak. What what I'm what I mean with this is, and just keep in mind that last hit by will never get populated if you have God mode enabled. So I'm going to disable God mode script, and then I'm going to go to a location where there are there is someone who can hit me. Let me use fly. And let me set it to 2400 to move faster. 
then let me get here. Uh, I want. I want. To go here. Hopefully they respond. They didn't. Nice. So, let's take a look at the last hit by. It's zero. And watch, watch now. Alright, so I got hit. So this is who hit me. And this is the, the address of the structure of the pawn AI, just like my character, who hit me. Now, if I take this and look it up here, you will see that can't find the text. Why? That is because this scrag, or whatever it's called, uh, who just hit me, was spawned a few moments ago from that den. And if you remember what I told you, whenever something gets spawned, it will not be in that list, so you need to redump the file. So I'm going to press numeric pad slash. I'm going to wait for a few seconds for the file to get generated on disk. It takes a bit, so don't click yes right away. Just wait for a few seconds. Then click yes, so the full file is reloaded. Then, let's see, who hit me? This is who hit me. A scag. Now, remember that this scag that just hit me is also a player like I am. So this is the scag. Let me copy this. This is the scag, right? This is who I am. Okay. So because of the fact that these two pointers are of the are of type pawn, the structure that you see outlined here in the debug section will also work for any other pawn. Therefore, what I can do with last hit by if whoever hit me last is a pawn, I can use that and say something like this. So for this pawn, if I go to to the actual pawn itself, it should be this, and then I go to offset E70 in that structure. Actually, let's let's just do it. So I copy the Skags address, right? I go here, set it to 8 byte hex, and I go to offset E. 70. I want to go to the resource pool component. Why? I'll explain in a sec. So I go to E70, scroll all the way down to E70. And at E70, I see that there is no resource pool component store here. And that is because probably this is a modified pawn in the sense that it's still a pawn, but given the fact that this is an AI, a monster, it doesn't have all the structure is located at the same spot with us. I mean, at the same offset. So, if I want to find the resource pool component for this pawn, what I can do is I can look for a resource pool component. Hold on, like this. First, let me look how it's called for my player. So, I'm searching for this. It's called Game Resource Pool Manager Component. And it's here. And I'm assuming, let's see, if I find one for that skag. So the skag was called skag shared C37. Uh, apparently there isn't one. And I'm assuming that they are using, so the skag anything that's skag related is using the default skag where where did i see it so here uh, come on man i saw skag earlier super badass badass ultimate super badass all right so let me 
oh, 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 hold on, hold on. So BP Char's Keg Pop, it has a resource pool component. But where's 37? This is annoying. Okay. It doesn't have a, such a component. Well, okay, so what I was trying to do is to get from the pawn, from the skag, which is who last hit me, to get to its resource pool component and then to get to the current health and make hit its health go to minus one or something like that. If you take this and you put it into a script, you get something like whenever some someone hits you, their health is made, is written to the value of minus one, which means instant kill. So you hit me, you die, something like that. <laughs> you can create a script like that by using these properties. But apparently this one doesn't have the... Oh, it's a skag pop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, one of okay, so here's a skag pop that's coming to hit me. Alright, so I got hit. Last hit by is this one. And then you'll see that it's a different pop. There we go, shared 39. So this is the other skag. I kill 37. Now 39 hit me. And then in here I saw earlier when I searched for it. Um, resource pool component. And I saw something like Skag pop, skag pop. Default, default skag badass. Actually, what I want to look for is ob object property and resource pool component, but I don't see any. Well, you get the idea. Find all in current document. Yeah, so the object property for resource pool component leads me to sorry. Yeah, for hex. As you can see, the offset is E70, but it's of type oak character. So this, the one that I'm, the one that just hit me, the skag is not an oak character. It's still a pawn, but something different. So the resource, so the resource pool component pointer is not where I'm, where I'm expecting it to be found at E70. It's somewhere else. So what I was trying to do to to make its health minus one might not work right from here. So let's continue. I will probably post the script later on, just for the sake of the argument, to see how it works, how you can make use of that last hit by property. All right. Uh, back here. So last hit by. Now there are a few boolean values in here that you might want to play with, but since you have God mode enabled, it won't matter. I'm going to re-enable God just in case. Uh, then, you have the Ability Manager component which might be populated with uh, stuff related to your ability, your current ability, or any other ability that you, you might have and want to use. Status Effect Manager component um, is going to be about the effects that apply to your pawn when, for example, you walk some into some uh, hazardous material or uh, a fire barrel explodes or something like that and those effects apply to you. In the Oak Charter inventory you can see your money and your Iridium. There you go. Money, Iridium. You see them here. Uh, I don't know why I didn't list the uh, skeleton keys. Well, I will add them in here as well if you want to just modify them. So for example, if you set this to 1, you go back in here. In order for you to see this value refreshed, you have to reopen the menu. There you go, it's refreshed. 
Um, Oak Bank, Oak Chapter Bank Inventory, I'm assuming is going to refer to uh, the bank in which you store your weapons. Then Fight for Your Life component, you can probably add some stuff in here as well, as, such as, let's say, the amount of Fight for Your Life uh, time to be unlimited, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, the important part, current weapon. So I'm currently having this weapon selected. Interesting. 22 shells in the clip and 222 bullets in my magazine. Quite interesting. 222. <coughs> so in here, if you want to avoid, if you want to disable recoil, you'll have to look at the weapon recoil pattern component, recoil pattern uh, samples, and then you look at the second attribute here. As you can see, there pretty much fucked up and that is because the recoil the weapon recoil pattern component is not at the same offset same location for all of the weapons for example if I equip a pistol here slot 2 you can see that well the recoil pattern data is correct it's a value 4 bytes value that if I set to 0 and fire I don't have any recoil don't see my weapon recoiling at all. The same goes for sway. If I change this value to zero, you won't see the weapon swaying at all. But if I move to this other weapon, you see bogus values here. And like I said, that is because the weapon recoil pattern component and weapon sway components are not at the same location. In order to fix this, you click on the samples values you double click here and you want to play, you want to tilt with this pointer here. You want to go up or down. If you go up one time, well, there you go. And the same happens here. If you go up one time, there you go. So now if you change this to zero, there is no recoil, as you can see. The reason the screen is shaking is because of the effect of how that weapon works. Sway is zero, so there shouldn't be any issues from there. Um, so this is how you work out weapon recoil, weapon sway. Now, in the weapon file projective, fire projectile component area, you can play with the weapon charge component. If your weapon has uh, a charge, like Atlas weapons that require that fire energy and they require the, the shot to be charged, so to speak. You can see it's not the case here. This weapon doesn't have such a thing. But if it does, go to charge time, attribute one, set it to zero, and you'll fire instantly. You don't have to wait for the weapon to get charged. Fire rate. If we set this to 20, for example, this is what's gonna happen. You can see the increase. Let me just use the actual pistol to show you. So 1 to 20, it's going to do this. Alright. Uh, note that, for example, I think if you enable the zoom, so there are weapons when, when you enable the zoom and you get out of it, this line here will reset to the value down below it. So it's safe to say that it, it would be an idea for you to change both to 20. I think I had a weapon in my inventory that did that. This one, for example, I think. Yeah, so if you take a look at this weapon and change this to 20, hopefully, you see how fast it, it fires. And because of the fact that... So, here's an example how recoil is broken. So if you take this, go to samples, dial it down to 10, 8, you can see question marks here still, 10, 18, 20. Let's try 20. There we go. Zero. Now there's no recoil. If you go back to the samples here and you do 28, you can already see that this is zero. So there's no sway. 
Alright, the reason you see the bullets being spread out is the fact that we've not yet fiddled with spread. We only fiddled with the fire rate. So I changed this to 20. Let's see if if I zoom and fire. When I return to normal. Ah, it doesn't apply to this one. Alright, so 20 here. And let's fill with... So take a look at the crosshair here. Uh, where is it? So for example, if you don't use um, the unlimited clip ammo script and change this to zero. So let me disable it. There you go. Alright. So you saw how fast the bullets can deplete. Okay. Now, if you scroll back and take a look at shot ammo cost and you set this to zero, you get unlimited ammo as well. So this is the offset from which to E0 the engine depletes your clip ammo. Talking about spread and handling, all spread is here. So set this to zero, both of them, base and calculated. Then you have handling set to zero, both. If you take a look at the crosshair now, and when you fire, there's no spread anymore. They all go in a straight line. Where's that damn vehicle? Now you know how to deal with recoil, sway, uh, spread, and accuracy. That's what handling is. So, so here you have accuracy, here you have spread. If you're using a burst weapon, you may want to change these to zero. Then if you want to change your, your weapon's damage, I'm not doing that because, well, if you already increased the fire rate, and what's the point of having modifying the damage just so you can kill mobs faster as a one hit kill if you will but if you want to do one hit kills just increase this to 1000 5000 or something like that both of them uh, damage radi radius I think it's the damage in which let's see 200 I don't know just testing the damage See that? Probably applied to also whatever's near the, the target. Uh, impact force. Now this is a nice setting. So if you change this to a higher value, like 10 times higher, what will happen is the moment you... Hmm, let me just use a standard weapon that doesn't fire random projectiles. Shotguns, not shotguns. Alright, this one. Okay. I will have to redo all of the stuff. So, weapon recoil. I think it's back to 10. Yep, there we go. Set it to 0. And sway samples, I think it's back to 18. This is already 0, so now I don't have any... Okay. Cool. And then... Fire rate, I usually put it 20. And then... Uh, here, shot ammo cost. I set it to zero. Mm, zero. Damage now. And then spread, zero. You can already see the crosshair on screen. Alright. Now. We want to discuss this impact force. What impact force does is whenever you're hitting an object, usually an AI, I don't I saw that it doesn't work with vehicles, 
So when you're hitting an AI with your projectile, with your bullet, that impact force determines how far are you going to throw that object in the air. There you go. <laughs> that was the scrap. Alright, let me try and find an AI. I'm going to do fly. I'm going to go up here. Mm, not here. Well. Right. Here maybe. Where the hell are they? Ah, there you go. So one spawned right there. So if I hit him in the leg or something, you can see, you can see when he dies that you couldn't hit a cow's arse with a banjo. I should use a rifle, uh, a rifle, um, machine gun or something, just so you can see the effect. All right, let's see if this cat flies. All right, there you go. That's the impact force. So when you hit them and they don't explode, they're thrown in the air several meters. Mm. I think here. It's Get out here, you bum! All right. Cool. Watch this. Boom, boom. So that's impact force. <laughs> the force with which you're throwing. Damn that effect. Ooh. Look at him go. I'm hitting their legs. What I did for this to work is I changed the impact force from 220,000 uh, to 200,000. Let's see what happens if I change this to even higher values. Right. Where are you? Uh, look at him go. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, let's see, I can hit him in from midair. <laughs> so I sent him across the map. Try again. No, no, that one died. Here he goes. Interesting. Ooh. Yeah, another one bites dust. This is quite fun to send them flying like this. <laughs> Alright. Okay. What else do you see there? Uh, weapon type, weapon user. So who's the owner of the weapon, weapon manufacturer. If you own a vehicle or not. So this is basically uh, the offset at which you'll see the pointer for your uh, vehicle. Um, player state component. In here you see the level, you see the experience that you have currently. You can change them, of course. Grenade throw cooldown. If you set this to zero, you instantly throw out grenades without having to wait for one second. So you spam grenades, so to speak. And then there is this feature. If you set this to C, so right now when I'm firing a weapon, you can see the screen is moving. So 
for example, if I use this, the screen is also shaking a bit to the top. Alright, so now if I change this to value C, there's no more screen shaking. The weapon is shaking, but the screen isn't. So you get a little bit more stability. Yeah. Accuracy, if you will. <laughs> this is one of the AIs that I threw in midair. He's, he's coming back. <laughs> Let's see if I find the other ones that I just threw in midair. possible that they went down there Well, I'm quite enjoying this right now. <clears throat> I don't know about you. Ah, yeah, one more thing to note is each weapon, weapon mod, each weapon... Oh, I can't even jump because of the, the bipod. Now I can jump. So if you switch weapon modes with C, then as you can see, the ammo is depleting. So you'll have to work your way around the weapon mod as well. So we go back here. Um, Shot ammo cost zero. It doesn't decrease anymore. And you can also see that the accuracy has changed. So, yeah, it's a bit to work with if you switch modes. Also note that these settings that you're you're setting here, the settings that you're setting, geez. Um, so everything that you modify in here doesn't get saved to your current weapon. That's one thing you should know, in case you were going to ask. It also, it's also not saved when you transition from one level to another. Uh, I think. Let me try. Mm, here. Fast travel. So I'm currently still in the level. So this is not level to level transitioning. As you can see, the property is still here. And then if I want to do. Well, I can go anywhere else right now. Oh yeah, I can go here. So let's, the droughts. Okay, the level is loading. And let's see my settings transition along with me. Oh yeah, so. For the current game session, the settings are in effect, as you can see. Didn't anyone teach you how to fight? All right, so this works even if you transition to another level. Um, but if you close the game and you reopen it and get in into the game world, you'll have to redo all of that again. Now, if you're annoyed by the fact that you have to redo all of this again, you can also set hotkeys, for example. Set hotkeys to uh, set those values in. Or, um, again, if you're bored and you don't think that doing all of this manually uh, is something for you, if, 
it's wasting your time and whatnot, you can just use a trainer. So this here is for people who want to also take some breaks apart from the game and not play constantly. So for me at least, this way I can enjoy the game a bit better because, well, I put some pause in, I leave the player there, I do some stuff in Cheat Engine, then I go back and play just the way I want it. By constantly shifting the way in which the gameplay happens, um, that won't make me bored again of the game. Right, let's see. Anything else that I should mention in here? Well, you can achieve infinite ammo various means, like here and here. You have it in game view, and you have it in game state. Be infinite ammo if you change this to one, or you have it in here in the player character, player controller. Sorry, player control plus that offset. It's a boolean value. Set it to zero. If you want to know where I got it from, just look for this. So there you go. You have it in game state at the offset that you can read from this. You have it in the player controller at an offset that you can read from here. Um, weapon ammo pool component relates to those crates in which you find ammo here. So I think that if you open these and um, you get those objects, they don't vanish, they stay there. But each crate has a, an individual pointer, like those green ones there, and that green one there. So you would have to find the addresses for them if you, want, if you want those crates to have infinite ammo. I don't know. Who would want that? That's about it in terms of explanations. Um, one more thing I want to show you before I conclude the, on this video is this last seconds before shops reset. So if you go to some shop, mm, which is, let me go to the next level. You can see that the counter is still going here. So all of the shops in the game use the same counter when it comes to this item of the day. You see there are 17 minutes. Now if I drag this to the right, so 1031 measured in seconds is 17 minutes and 06 seconds. Now if I change this to 5, that's what's going to happen here. Boom, a new item. And then the counter gets reset. If I change this to 4, 3, 2, 1, boom. And a new item shows. As you can see, it's the same counter for item of the day for any machine that you look at. Just in case you wondered how to reset the vending machine timer. Um, and I think that's about it. That's as much stuff as you can do with my cheat table. Hope this was entertaining for you as it was for me explaining it. Sorry about the blabbering and the uh, ooh, uh, ooh, and the inconsistency at some point, but it's been like three or four hours. Uh, since I've been redoing this video because of various problems like crashing or microphone getting stuck on mute and stuff like that. Software crashing and so on and so forth. So thank you for your attention and I hope this, like I said, this was enjoying uh, for you as it was for me to explain it and I hope to get you around sometime soon. Talk to you. Bye.